Oh, hi. This week, I'm gonna take you along the journey of getting ready for my first convention since 2019. This is the big one. It's always been the biggest event of my year. And obviously, I, I haven't done anything like this in a couple years. It is official con crunch, but I also still have other work I have to get done. So I'm gonna show you how I attempt to juggle these things and fingers crossed we survive this dang thing. <laughs> All right, today is September 3rd, it's Saturday. And the first week of every month is when I put out the mail time perk for Patreon. And every three months, I also send out the custom shit tier because I specifically make a thing for both of those folks where sometimes I will make stuff for everybody that's part of the mail time perk, but sometimes it's things from my travel. So for this month, I'm not going to show you what the notes say because they're personal, but I bought these cards from a local artist up in Maine. And then I have a little like town map from somewhere I got to visit over the summer. And then if you've been following me for a decent stretch of time, you know that I hoard maps whenever I go places and find them. So just sharing the obsession. And yeah, I even started making my own custom labels because I bought some sticker paper in the hopes of making stickers, but then realized like this will save me so much time and just has way more fun personality to it when I have stuff like this. Also, the addresses for the people I'm sending it to is in a similar format. Obviously, I don't want to show you other people's addresses, so just know that they're cute as hell, and I'm very proud of the design that I came up with. So I'm going to pack those up, and then I have to run to Staples because I ordered a banner finally. I wanted a square one that wasn't an option, so I ended up doing a long rectangle one, and I'm going to cut it in half so that I can have a sign hanging on my backdrop and then also one on my table table for this event. So fingers crossed that comes out okay. But otherwise, yeah, I spent all day yesterday cutting out stuff to do some color block cardigans. I'm going to make one Totoro one because I have this faux fur that is perfect for this kind of thing, but is the worst fabric to work with. So I'm glad this is the end of it. I have emptied three different storage spots in my shop by using up all of the fleece because I've also cut out two solid color cardigans with this orange and green. And then the bigger scraps I used to cut out some fleece hats that I'm gonna sew together. And then that's all of the scraps that are left in that little bin because my plan is to offer some customization. Like obviously the Totoro one is kind of specific, but I'm gonna have some extra fabric out so if people want a star added to the pocket like my Ramona flowers one that I did last two weeks earlier sometime in August. <laughs> I'll have that as an option and same with the hats if they want it to look like a little Pikachu face. I may make a display one that has the face because I still have some cut out from previous points in my sewing career where I was making onesies for my Etsy shop. I'm not doing that again. It was it was too much. But stuff like this I think would be a lot of fun to offer customization just to have like a unique spin on my artist alley table because I know lots of traditional artists do commissions at their table and that's just like part of their weekend. So I think it would be fun to offer a little like hand sewn appliques. And also yeah if it's slower it'll give me something to do and obviously if it's busy like I'm gonna have to limit how many I do in the day but I'm really looking forward to doing that. I think it's gonna be a lot fun. I'm much more excited about these projects knowing that's an option and I'm curious like if people go for it what they're gonna ask for. I'm very into the potential of what these projects could look like. So I have decent chunks of each of those colors in the scrap bin so that like pretty much whatever someone comes up with I should have enough to work with. But yeah so I have I think 10 cardigans cut out and 13 hats cut out so that's gonna be a lot of my weekend is just getting that sewn together and honestly just like getting this stuff the hell out of my way because as I said, it's been taking up so much space where both these bins were full to bursting with fleece. And then we don't have to talk about the fabric pile in front of it, but this cabinet back here in the corner was also completely full of fleece, like packed to bursting. It's something I've always had in mind, like, oh, I have all of these ideas for what to do with it and then just wasn't doing anything. So this is a great fire I have lit under my ass with this convention coming up. So I'm gonna take care of the mail. I'm gonna change out of my pajamas finally because I do have to work at the brewery later today and tomorrow afternoon. So juggling that, my other part-time job where I'm a seamstress at a uniform store. I think I'm working the farmer's market this coming week. There's just a lot of plates I'm gonna have to try to spin at the same time, but, but I think we can do this. This time of year is where I have the most juice in the tank. So I'm gonna try to ride that high. <laughs> we got this. All right, I will check in once we get the banner. Two small updates about the Patreon mail. I measured out how tall the maps were, but then forgot how girthy they are. So I couldn't actually use the clasps on these. I had to tape over it. So 
Hopefully y'all don't mind the discrepancy there. And also it is occurring to me, you know, that these need postage and they're certainly bigger than regular envelopes. So I can't just use stamps and just so I make sure they don't get sent back to me for some reason. I'm gonna go to the post office. It's still early enough that they're open and just have them ring it up. Normally I either use pirate ship if it's packages or I just have a roll of stamps at home. And then if I do have to go into the post office. I usually use the self-serve machine, but I just want to make super sure that these go out in the right format because I hate when stuff gets sent back. It's only happened once or twice that something has come back to me for that reason, and one of those times was an international thing that, like, I just checked the wrong box, I think. But anyway, just, you know, just admin things. <laughs> oh, also there's a hole in the house where a window used to be, so, you know, just don't worry about it. <laughs> and just to confirm helping take that out, yes indeed was my first time standing on scaffolding and I do not like heights apparently. Okay, okay. I got my sign. This is what I went with. But there's two of them because yeah, I wanted this to be square, but I couldn't, so I just made two. This will be really easy to cut. I think it'll hold up to like being taped to stuff well. But obviously if I pierce through it, it's like kind of plasticky paper. Like obviously it's not, I got the cheapest option because I've, I've never gone down this road before. And especially for getting two signs out of it for less than $20, I'm very happy with how this came out. And yeah, we'll see how it works out at the convention. And if it goes well and I feel like these are lacking, then I will absolutely get other ones made that are better. But this is definitely gonna tide me over because I, I had some way over complicated ideas planned for doing this myself and like I'm all about the DIY lifestyle but also I have less than two weeks to get all my shit together and the time it would have taken to do this and also still would not have looked as good as this it was worth the investment for this and again I know it's not a huge investment but for, for what I'm coming from and yeah this was uh $16.95 we don't have sales tax here so it may be more where you are but that's like the base price where I have an idea for how I'm gonna clip it to my backdrop so I don't even think I need to install any grommets and because it's so lightweight I think taping it to to my table will also like work out really well. All right, now I have about two hours before I have to go work for the brewery. So I'm gonna try to sew at least one of my cardigans. I would love to get the Totoro one done so that I don't have to look at that fucking faux fur anymore. It's great, it has such a great effect, like nothing compares to it, but I am more than relieved to see it go. Okay, I was trying to figure out how to store the signs. So I took out my cutting mat, Cut it in half. I just used ruler and the rotary cutter. It went awry on one spot, so one's a little bit shorter than the other, but literally by like a centimeter. And then I was like, well, I don't want it to get crinkled anywhere. So I wrapped it around one of the tubes for my backdrop, but I don't want this stuff catching on anything and I don't want to tape onto it just to keep any residue off. So I just found this scrap newsprint piece. So I'm gonna wrap that around and tape it in place. Obviously I need both hands for this, but that's my storage solution, and then I'll put it back in my backdrop bag. Oh boy, hello, it is the 10th of September. Yeah, it's Saturday. Okay, I did my hair yesterday. I cut the sides and re-dyed it because I have been trying to make a point to like take more self-care time because I often think it's not worth taking the time to dye my hair because it, it is time consuming, but also not that time consuming. Like cutting my hair, it feels like a waste of my day, whatever's happening because I'm not being productive, but like I feel better about myself when my hair is done. So why not do that? I just feel wilted when it's a black color. Or like I'm not always aware of it because it's on my head and it's very short so I don't always see it but whenever I catch a glimpse of it I don't know yeah I just feel more confident about myself when my hair is this color so as for con progress I cut out a ton of tote bags I actually have a pile hanging over here and it took a good chunk of time cutting everything out and then pressing everything out I think I ironed everything for like an hour and a half this morning because it's generally like a quilting white cotton for the side panels and to stick with kind of a 90s vibe. I picked out denim for like the bottom panel because I'm going to box out the corners so it can stand up on its own and there will also be a flannel lining so it'll like give it a little bit more rigidity. And then I'm making denim straps which turning these tubes is quite a time. All the other ones have been going much easier than this but oh shit I also have some canvas ones that'll be probably a pain. Probably easier than the denim though. Anyway so my checklist for now is 
tote bags, dumpling pouches, little keychain pouches, and then dice bags. And that's like the order of priority I think I need to do because I only have two tote bag designs. I think there's like four or five total and I very much want more than that at my table. And same with the dumpling pouches. It's just the little Harry Potter designs that I made for that event on July 31st that I have left over and I just don't want that to be the only thing that's there. I have a ton cut out. It's all ironed. I have zippers that are complementary or matching colors all picked out like they're just ready to get sewn. So yeah, every batch of things is prepped. So it's just sitting and doing the stitching. Obviously there's some other prep steps like ironing the straps flat once I've turned them out, but I think that's the only additional step I need to do along the way through all of this. Like I don't think there's any other pressing I have to do on any of the other bags I'm working on. So kind of doing this marathon sewing I think is going to go pretty quick, but yeah, I am tired. I had to work the tap room for Rockingham yesterday all day Labor Day and the day after I just made all of my cardigans and hats and I think there's something else. Oh, I unboxed some keychains that I actually posted in a video that went up yesterday. So I have one more. Is there a mosquito in here? Oh my God, I'm upset. Anyway, my partner very kindly got me some fuel. I'm gonna try to get this prep session done. Stitching all of this together, getting the straps turned around. Cause the thing I want to do is like, you know, if this ends up a little bit wider than these two panels, I'm going to trim it all down and then make sure the lining is not bigger than the outer panels. So I'm going to need to take everything over to my cutting table. I want to do that all at once. And then I think the actual assembly for the rest of the tote bag steps is going to be a breeze. I think it's going to go by really quick. Per usual, it's, it's all of the prep stuff that takes forever. And then making the thing is like 10% of your work time. I will check in once I have gotten through some more of my piles and just cause I always find this very satisfying. Sorry, our vacuum's in the way. Actually, this vacuum is dead and we need another one. Oh, also I had to start writing the menu options for things that I buy to cook cause I forget things that I get at the grocery store and then things go bad. So this is my checklist. So I'm hoping to get through a couple more of these. We'll see what happens. There's one like question mark one at the bottom. Stickers is also not essential, but I would really like to have some super, super inexpensive things at my table just so if people only have a buck or two and want to like support whatever and still get something from it, I, I will have something. Okay, time for ice chai and a muffin and then more, more tube turning. Okay, it's later the same day. I feel terrible. I don't know if I have mentioned I am having maybe the worst period I've had in like five years. So that's a fun time. But I had a major score at Goodwill this past week. I was looking for like a candle holder, like a votive candelabra or something to hold all of my hats, but then stumbled upon this majestic thing. The only problem is it has like a fake marble base. So it's really hard and really smooth, but it's just like not the color I need it to be where the silver is fine. Everything else on my table is either black or silver. So like this ain't gonna work. I just took some electrical tape and put it around here because it's gonna go up above one of my stands. Actually, it's gonna be on top of a shelf that'll be on top of a shelf. So like everyone's gonna see it either from like side or from under. So I didn't worry about the top. No one's gonna see that. It's also gonna have hats like stacked in between here and I'm gonna have hats on all of these tiers. So I like, could not have asked for a better thing. Like I don't know what else this would be for, but it, it's multi-level. It's not taking up a ton of space because it's gonna go on top of that corner unit, which doesn't have a big top platform. Very much won the Goodwill lottery with this. Back to totes. Good morning. Yes, I'm in the same clothes. I'm about to go change, I promise. Oh, also it's Monday the 12th. And to be fair, I've changed everything else, but just the shirt I have put back on, I think three different times. So just to get a little checklist update, I did finish the tote bags. I stayed up to like 1.30 in the morning finishing them Saturday night, but I'm glad they're done. And then I thought for sure I would need to sleep more yesterday. And there were moments in the day where I was like feeling like a zombie and like I wasn't going to make it. But then I pulled through, I got like, like four and a half, maybe five hours of sleep into Sunday morning. And then, yeah, there were a couple times where I really, really felt like I was shutting down. And I do not recommend doing this to yourself, but I got through the day yesterday without any naps or having to go back to bed or anything like that. And I did have a bunch of other stuff I had to do, but I also finished like 20 dumpling pouches. So that's what this shape is. So we can cross this off the list. And then I obviously don't have everything in order, but like I know what my priority is, which is doing keychain bags next and then dice bags. Just cause I feel like 
keychain bags. Those are one of the cheapest things I have on my table. And I have a small stash of them, but I feel like if these go at all, there are a handful of styles of bags I'm gonna have. So I'm not making any more of the little pouches because those take so long. They took so long. And then there's these little like coin per the round ones, like that Superman and the Star Wars one down here. I haven't seen many people go for those, so I'm not gonna focus on that. But then I have like the flat version of the keychain pouches that I make for like dog bags, stuff like this. This is a more basic version of it because again, I'm not willing to charge more than $8 for these or like the two for 15 deal. I don't want to confuse anybody by having different amounts and like I, I'm just not willing to do it. So I need to take into consideration like my time. So slightly more basic versions of those and like machine stitching the bottoms closed on the inside of the lining instead of hand sewing it. I don't think anybody else would care, but that's something I usually take the time to like stitch close just because it looks way nicer, but not for big batch sewing like this. And again, like it's honestly probably more structurally integral. It has better structural integrity. I use that phrase a lot and I always fuck up saying it, but yeah, it's probably like better utility wise to machine sew it closed. It just looks less nicely finished. But again, it's on the bottom of the inside and I'm probably the only person that cares about that. So I actually have a bag ready to go. And by ready to go, I mean like I have prepped all of this. The reason that I have some in that other bag I just showed you of the finished keychain pouches is because I had this whole pile of prepped, which now that I'm looking at it is not that many. There's no way I'm not going to finish this like very quickly this morning, which is good because I I still have a lot of other stuff to do and honestly if something like this is selling really well on that first day knowing that these go pretty quickly like take not a ton of time to make the way that I'm making them it's something I can restock I'm not gonna burn myself out completely making a million of these so I think what I'm gonna do is make what I have prepped see how things are going on Friday like the first day of the convention because that's gonna go from 2 30 to eight, I believe, which is actually longer hours than I thought it was going to be for their first time doing a Friday. But listen, if I'm going to be there, let's just do the whole dang thing. Like I don't want to half-ass the time there. So if, if we're doing three days, let's do three days. Table cost is the same to me either way. So I'd rather get more out of it. But yeah, I, I'm thankful for that third day because I can have some extra time to kind of gauge what is selling and like restock some stuff if I have to. So since these go kind of quickly, I can rebuild a couple here and there. And then if there's someone asking, Asking about specific fabrics as long as I have it available to me like some of the tote bags I made I would like to make those in different style bags I just don't have the time right now and that's okay I don't have to make everything out of everything right now I have other events I'm gonna do Beetlejuice will still be relevant next year and Sonic the Hedgehog as relevant as it is right now because the people that are into it it's not just a this year thing, if that makes sense. To me, both of those things are evergreen, so not so worried about that. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to stitch these together and I do have to take Bert to the vet this morning just for a little a little maintenance tune-up. And then, like my plan was, tote bag Saturday, got that done. Dumpling pouches yesterday, got that done. Little keychain pouches today. There's no way I'm not gonna finish these like before lunchtime. So I think that means I can move on to the dice bags, which the number of bags I have prepped, I can't guarantee I can do that in one day, especially because now I'm realizing I had tomorrow set aside for just knocking out dice bags, but um, I also have to work at one of my other jobs the first like two thirds of the day, so I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> but since this is gonna go a lot quicker, that opens up the second half of today, if not more, to getting through some dice bags. Those are all prepped, they're all notched, they're all facing together, everything is pressed out, like they're ready to get sewn together. I will say I was doing some inventory totals just for my own record keeping and like, I don't know, it was really reassuring seeing how many of each thing that I have because it's a lot more than I thought. And this is a thing that I do to myself is I'm really down on me until I like check the facts and I'm like, no, we're, we good. Even just with the four things I have documented, which is dumpling pouches, tote bags, oh, also wristlets, so there's five things, fleece hats, and then the cardigans, just between those five sections, I can make twice my goal. So that's not including any of the mystery stuff, any of the keychain pouches, any of the dice bags, any of the jewelry. I feel like there's one more thing that I'm missing, but yeah, not including any of that. So that makes me feel really good. Once again, valuing my own stuff and building like an inventory with that in mind, like having having a goal is really nice and it feeling lofty but achievable 
you know? It, it feels ambitious, but it's okay for me to be ambitious. It's not something that I feel or do very often because I don't feel like I'm worth striving for things, which is a wild thing to say, but I'm starting to feel that way about myself. And that, that is really nice because I, I have been working really hard to up my skills for a long time and want to be doing events and selling my things and having my handmade stuff like out in the world. Like I've wanted that for a long time, but I'm finally feeling like they're good enough for that. And that is the bigger breakthrough. Okay, I can hear Bert getting up, so I'm gonna go take him outside and then, oops, I hit the button. And then I'm gonna sew some bags and then, and then sew some more bags. So I will update. I'm realizing I'm probably gonna post this before the event happens. Oh, and speaking of ambitious, the other thing is this past week has made me realize that next step is definitely industrial machine man. Proof I changed. Also, it's occurring to me tomorrow's gonna be an even longer day, part-time job. I do have to do groceries and that's probably gonna be my only trip out to do errands because it's kind of a mad week. So I need to stock up on like my snacks and everything for the convention and just like meals I will eat at home that'll kind of be like quick on the run type of things. Probably get a, get a bunch of Gatorade, stuff like that to make sure I keep my shit in check this weekend so I don't do all this work and then make myself sick. But also it is voting primaries tomorrow. So that will also take up a chunk of time. Okay, I even just took my vitamins, I'm changed. I do need to wash my face and like zhuzh my hair a bit and then um, put my shoes on. You know what keeps me really productive is having my fucking shoes on. Anybody, anybody else? Okay, it is still Monday. It is later in the day. I did finish all of the keychain bags, counted that inventory. I have like a lot of them. That does not feel terrible. I did start in on the dice bag pile. I did also forget that I have two other types of dice bags. There's I think nine or 10 that are gonna involve some velvet. So I'm gonna save those till the end cause it's gonna be a fucking mess and I don't wanna like clean up after that and then have to sew more stuff. So those are definitely gonna get done though cause those are literally the bags I'm most excited about making. But while I'm working on dice bags cause I'm kind of bored <laughs> with this part of the assembly, I really like the top stitching and like picking out the ribbon and threading that through. But I know this is gonna kind of be a little bit of a drag getting through just cause I have so many prepped in that pile. So I decided to take my Cricut out and start fucking around with some sticker designs. So yeah, just coming up with some cheapy stickers that I can have on my table because I think the least expensive expensive thing are mystery jewelry boxes that are six bucks a piece or two for ten which like hopefully is a fun thing for everybody but we'll see how it goes I've had pretty good luck with mystery stuff and like it's it's just all designs that I don't want to do anymore they're just retired shall we say and yeah I have decided this is going to be two parts because if I include the setup and the actual con weekend this is going to be five hours long and I don't want to do that so I'm going to break it up into two sections I'm going to end this today because I am doing kind of a normal week for the next couple days like I have a couple appointments I have to work I got to do groceries and run some errands and then do a bunch of batch cooking so I don't know how much con prep I'll get to do after today but I will obviously update in the next video but first let us go forage for some bricks because I have these like saddlebag weights that are for tripods for my backdrop and just so nobody kicks anything over while I'm not there or even if I am there I would not like that to come down on me and because they came with my tripods so why not utilize them yeah when I asked my partner for suggestions on what to fill this with because I don't have weights otherwise it did occur to me like cans would be good to put in there like full soda cans or something maybe not soda cans like Arnold Palmer cans specifically is what came to mind for me but also that could get messy if something goes poorly so is that how I sneak some beers into the convention <laughs> oh boy anyway he suggested some bricks and I asked if we had any and he's like we have hundreds so apparently there's a part of our yard I don't look in very often so let's go forage okay I mean I mean there's there's a good number of bricks back here oh and there's like little little half chunky boys perfect I think I'm gonna call my new ska punk band Backyard Bricks. Okay, 
bricks acquired. This is like a great amount of weight. So I think that's gonna do it for me on here for this week. But obviously I will give updates once I'm setting up at the con. I could probably do like a time lapse of me setting up my table, though it's gonna be in a couple different phases because I can go to the convention hall Thursday to drop some stuff off, but then the convention starts early Friday afternoon. But yeah, I get to set up my backdrop and use these things and have my new tablecloth that I might immediately cover with some other fabric, but still I get to do these kinds of things and have such a really well upgraded display setup because of everyone over on Patreon. Like it is because of y'all, sorry there are bugs, it is because of y'all that I'm able to advance the look of my table and hopefully that'll increase the number of people coming over and draw them in a little bit more and just kind of snowball effect continue to improve things thank you all for helping make even this kind of stuff happen this is going to be a huge factor in me liking my table set up a lot more and probably just other people taking it more seriously not that it has to be like serious business but i feel like it legitimizes me a little bit more so yeah all right i'm getting sweaty from moving tiny bricks around so i'm gonna go back inside Keep doing some stickers, listening to the Adventure Zone Ether Sea. Probably most likely go to bed at a reasonable time. We'll see. I will give other updates soon. So yeah, and I will see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Hi, just kidding. I'm editing this and realized I forgot to say I'm going to take next week off from posting a video because I will be an absolute shell of myself come Monday. But I will be back the week after. It's going to be the very last Friday in September, which is also going to be the Friday right before the Halloween market I'm doing at Rockingham Brewing Company. So if you'd like more information on that, it is from 1 to 4 on Sunday, October 2nd. So just if you see this and not that one in time, I wanted to make sure the info was here. I actually have a little bit more time tomorrow. Today's Tuesday. I worked one of my other jobs all morning and then had a million errands to run and it's 8 o'clock and I'm just now getting into the shop like editing this video because that was another thing I had to do this week and I want to give myself that reprieve next week. So yes, anyway, before I start tangenting again, I will be back in two Fridays on September 30th and it's either going to be the video of me making those velvet bags that I've been talking about because I, I want to show you how I'm doing them or it will be the second half of the artist alley video con vlog whatever you want to call this of my actual table setup and like how the weekend went and my recap and like how it goes hopefully well but i have no idea if you come to granite con this weekend please 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 come say hi i'm settling in for a couple hours of dice bag sewing because i did not get too far in my pile but i do have a bunch of stickers that are done so like i'm not stressed about that hopefully can have the dice bags finished by end of tomorrow which is wednesday i do have some appointments so like that's gonna eat into the day but it's gonna be fine so I will see you back here on the 30th if i don't see you at granite con thank you so much for hanging out so all the yellows are together and the oranges and the blues and the green, you know, all of that. You know how colors work.